Hey guys, what's up? Timmy J Tech here, and welcome back to my channel. In this series, I'll be showing you how to create your own idle clicker game in Unity. Recently, I've created the base of an idle clicker game, and now I'll continue to add new features to make it look and work a bit better. In this episode, I'll show you how to use the animation window and how to add basic animations to objects and sprites in Unity. If you are enjoying this series, please subscribe. I'm going to be adding new features each week so you can learn about all of Unity's features and how to spice up your game. To get animations working, the first thing we'll want to do is go up here to Window and go to Animation. And we'll open this animation window. You can dock it here next to the project window. And now we'll want to animate this duck. If I go into the barnyard that I recently made in the last episode, which is just the canvas, I have my animal duck. And right under the duck, we're going to want to add a new component. And this will be animation. This will take in an animation clip. And we'll want to deselect play automatically because we don't want the animation to play automatically when the game starts. Before we create an animation, we'll want to go into our project window and create a new folder under our assets. This folder will be called animations. Go back into the animation window and hit create. We can create a new animation. I'll just call this roundupduck.anim, save. And now we have an animation here. We can add a new property and this will be whatever we're changing. I'm gonna add in the transform scale. If you hit preview and record, this will change what is happening during the actual animation. So I can click and add in another keyframe here. So when I hit play, it doesn't do anything. But here in this actual keyframe, if I change the scale and see how it's red because you're changing the scale, I'll change the X to be 1.5 and 1.5. And if you slide up here, you can see it's changing a bit weird. And this is not not what I was looking for. All right, we'll add in the scale and then we can double click to add in another point here. We'll change the scale to 1.5, 1.5. And so now when it changes, now it kind of changes the scale. So just by typing in that new point, you can add in a new point anywhere. So now I have this, I'm gonna make this animation a bit smaller, just so it's pretty quick. Just zoop. It's a quick, uh, you know, bounce effect for when they're being herded up. And then we can also add another property, maybe the image color. We can change the color tint. So right here. There we go. So now it will have color and then it will go away. We can change this color to be whatever we want. I'll probably change it maybe to a red. Red is a little bit more alarming. Okay, so then once you have that animation, you can go to your animations folder and the roundup duck is here. And I did change it so that it is under button instead of this, just because the scale of the image is a bit different. So the scale is based on the button where the actual image is. So I put the animation under there and then you drag and drop the roundup animation under animation. Make sure you also deselect play automatically. Now this duck will have the animation, but we have to tell it when to play. And instead of playing automatically, we want it to play when you're rounding it up. We can put this into the animal function. So let's open up our script. Here in the animal script, we're going to want one new variable and that's going to be the animation. So we're going to want public animation and we'll call it anim. Then down here in the damage function, we will say when they're doing the damage, anim.play. Go back into Unity. Our animal script will need that new animation. So let's drag and drop the button where the animation is. Our animal script will need a reference to the animation, which is on our button. And now when we hit play and deal that damage, it will actually show that animation. But if you can't tell, it's actually playing the animation and then playing it over it. So if we go back into our script, we'll just want to call animation.stop right before. This will stop any animations and then play the new one. Save and go back into Unity. Now we can hit play and try again. And there we go, it's a little bit more fluid. Once he goes in the barn, boom, we've caught him. If you did enjoy, please drop a like. I'll have more content coming very soon, so stick around. This was just a sample of the animation component, but you can really go wild with all of the components and the customization that comes with it. If you did enjoy, please drop a like. I'll have more content coming each week, so stick around. But thank you all for watching and have a nice day.